In Earth's history, pterosaurs were flying reptiles which dominated the skies during the Age of Dinosaurs. Although some did have feathers, or at least filaments so similar it seems pretentious to call them anything else, the wings of pterosaurs were made of membranes supported by a single massive finger and stretched to the leg. Unlike birds, which take off with their legs but fly with their wings, it seems pterosaurs took off from a quadrupedal stance and mostly launched with their wings. This consolidation of anatomy seems to have been more efficient than bird takeoff, and is often cited as to why the largest pterosaurs were able to get so much bigger than the largest birds. They were highly diverse and successful, with towering giants, diminutive critters, filter feeders, and specialists in fish, insects, and small game. Although they went extinct alongside the dinosaurs 66 million years ago on Earth, their legacy continued on Chimere through the planet's own great extinction, and continues to define the skies to this day, with greater diversity than ever before. Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. In Earth's history, Tapajarids were humble relatives of the Great Ajdarkids. They seem to have had a wide range of preferences within the clade, with some generalists, one having been found with seeds preserved in their abdomen, suggesting a diet of fruit and nuts, a beak shaped for other species suggesting fruit specialization, omnivory, and even some that hunted larger game. Although originally presumed to be a marine clade, with the great crest of Tupendactylus suggested to function like a sail, they are now thought to have been arboreal or forest-dwelling species based on diet and the curvature of their claws being suitable for climbing. The beak of one tapajarid, Thalassodromius, or Ocean Runner, was so named because their bladed lower jaw resembled those of skimmers. However, now the leading theory is that they would have been part of a unique prey capture method. Thalassodromius had one of the strongest bites of any pterosaur, and could likely dismember prey with its scissor-like bill. When they were brought to Chimera during the early Cretaceous, Tapajarids were in the shadow of the giant Ramphorhynchids, and generally favored forest habitats as generalist omnivores to avoid competition. At the beginning of the Tyrant Dynasty, the Ramphorhynchids were wiped out, and Nyctosaurs and Ishdarkids took their place, coming from Earth already so large as to prevent an adaptive radiation of the Tapajarids, who remained small generalists. During this time, two clades of Tapajard independently developed superior arboreal adaptations, such as opposable thumbs and binocular vision, and these two became the surviving clades of generalists, one favoring fruit and nuts and other small game. Some of the herbivores in Kaishel doubled down on these adaptations in ways we will cover shortly. Opportunity came to the Tapajards in the aftermath of the dynastic extinction. With no established giants in the skies and none being harvested, many clades vied for dominance. It seems the Tapajards, likely from their adaptability making them ideally suited to launch into a diverse adaptive radiation, was the key to their success. Their modern diversity in the known world is little changed from that initial speciation event, as is typical of adaptive radiations. Largely unchained from their ancestors even before the Tyrant Dynasty are the Basal Nut Snappers. This group have distinctive downward curved beaks reinforced by a large crest. Their beaks are strong, able to crack through tough seeds as their name suggests. Some also dabble in tough vegetation, and one genus, the Crab Snappers, hunts for crabs in coastal environments. They are a fairly skittish group and tend to avoid settlements. Primates and parrots have proven to be their greatest competition, and the smaller species have not lasted in the volatile ecology of the known world, but they do tend to be more successful in the realms beyond. Because of their relative scarcity and reclusive nature, little is known about their lifestyle. The predatory clade Gladimaxillidae was especially successful in the known world, and two tribes are recognized in modern Chimera. 
Terror Gulls, and the Bat Hawk. Terror Gulls are, perhaps ironically, quite like the original niche assumed by Earth paleontologists about tapajards as marine hunters, although they neither skim feed nor use their crest as a sail. The crests, often likened in profile to antlers, are mostly for display, although they do reinforce the powerful bites of these pterosaurs. They hunt a variety of animals, with the smaller species targeting fish and squid, while larger elk turn often hunt marine mammals and beachcomb, using their powerful beaks to slice apart even the tough carapace of crabs. This genus possesses the widest wingspan of any pterosaur proportional to their bodies, ranging from 15 feet in the smallest species to almost 30 in the largest, helping them effortlessly soar for hundreds of miles in search of prey. They are also the fastest pterosaur, with the largest and fastest species, the elk churn, able to fly for days without rest. They are proficient swimmers, able to dive for several meters after spotting game. There are four species in the known world, but they are a cosmopolitan genus, with terror gulls found on every shore thus far explored by Chimeran voyagers. In Songs of the Inland Sea, a witch is bound to a buckturn familiar, and the legendary speed and endurance of this genus plays a critical role in the outcome of this novella. Although the terror gulls outcompeted the giant Enantiornithians, true birds, and a few surviving nictosaurs that vied for the niche of giant marine flyer, the dire petrel is an exception to the general competitive exclusion of the pterosaurs. With their ancestor Pelagornis coming from South America, right when the inland sea took its modern form, they managed to establish themselves amidst the competition as a tropical specialist exclusive to the shallow sea. The terror gulls have dominion over the region, and while the dire gull is a rare sight, they prove that the dominion of pterosaurs is not absolute. The most species group of pterosaurs in the known world are the bat hawks. They are arboreal, terrestrial, and airborne predators that take the blade jaws of their ancestors to an extreme. With an upper jaw that sharpens the blade with every close and a hook that not only pierces prey but also keeps it in the jaws, this unique configuration backed by powerful jaws makes their bite especially lethal. The largest species can shear through armored prey. The downward hook of their jaw strengthens the skull, especially reinforced by a crest. Juveniles have shorter generalized beaks, which grow into a more pronounced downward hook and blade as they mature. Unlike other Chimeran pterosaurs, tapajards have prolonged parental care, with few offspring having a much better chance at reaching adulthood. Bat hawks, in particular, mate for life and regularly raise their offspring until adolescence at three to five years of age. They are highly intelligent to the wonder and frustration of Chimerans who live alongside them. Bathawks come in a range of colors, with green forest species, golden prairie hunters, and red generalists. Some hunt on the ground, others in trees, while the common bathawk is notorious for chasing down and catching birds, bats, and other pterosaurs, often targeting wings and slicing them apart or dismembering completely. A highly elastic gullet allows them to carry prey caught on the wing in their throats before processing and swallowing once they find a safe place to land. Bathawks are notoriously agile flyers and climbers, and are anywhere from a nuisance to a threat, especially to pets and children. Although most bat hawks are on the smaller side, with a mass of 10 to 50 pounds and a wingspan ranging from 8 to 15 feet, two are massive, with the largest rivaling the Sunrise Titan in terms of size, despite being nearly half as tall. While not members of the Terragol clade, the Banshee Gull is a bat hawk that got massive by playing the maritime game of their cousins on the giant scale. They prefer cooler territory, but will winter throughout the known world. With their shearing jaws, keen eyes, and massive wingspan, they can cover a vast amount of territory in search of food. 
Beachcombing and scavenging makes up the bulk of their diet, and they are able to find and snatch a meal before even the beasts of the sea can arrive. They are proficient hunters and will sometimes hunt seals and sloths, though these herds can prove quite dangerous, and a grounded gull in a herd will rarely survive. Their name comes from the harrowing scream of this species, so loud and shrill that many sailors have reported short-term paralysis in its wake. <coughs> this call also serves to assemble relatives who have not found enough food, and smaller terror gulls and seabirds will also flock to the scene. Although this has led to a reputation of the Banshee Gull as a ruler of all seabirds, this is more of an opportunistic behavior on the part of other topajards and birds than any sort of rulership. It is, however, common to see them with an entourage of smaller gulls with them, although their far superior speed and endurance of these pterosaurs mean that their entourage usually disperses after a few regional hunts. Largest of the topajards is the mighty Titan Crow. Although they sport a shorter wingspan and height than the Sunrise Titan, they are technically larger as they outweigh the Sunrise Titan by a notable margin. This species is the pinnacle of macro-predatory topajards, taking on the habitats and methods of backhawks to the extreme. In many habitats, such as the highlands of Arvel and southern islands, they are apex predators. When bringing down large prey or dangerous game, they ambush or run them down, delivering a single shearing bite, then retreat while prey succumbs to blood loss and shock before coming to finish the job and quickly portion out their kill. Although they are generally safe from predators of the Arvella Highlands, where they are most common, an injury to the wing could ground them. Grounded Titan Crows are far from harmless. Many Arvella stories tell of broken wing ravens turning man-eater, and without flight they often become more brazen and aggressive, but they are generally adverse to risk and prefer to fly. So taking enough to fill their gullet, Titan Crows will leave the rest for scavengers and retreat to a roost. A subadult Titan Crow with a broken wing, infected by magic that made him especially large and aggressive, is the antagonist of my first short story, Death Walks on Broken Wings. The Raven King, Vascalamaldus as he is called, takes to man-eating from a logger village in Kajar, a place where his wing injury and great size eventually force him to make land. The Raven King's intelligence, speed, and surprising stealth makes him a menace to the entire region evading hunters, and enduring many arrows and spears, killing far more than even his great appetite can process. Eventually, tales of his destruction reach the notorious hunter of man-eaters, Nasiri, who joins loggers who have suffered under the demon's reign in an effort to vanquish the sadistic Raven King. <laughs> In the southern realms of Kaishel, a mysterious predator has forced the interior of the continent into a tense silence. While the Titan Crow and Banshee Gull summer in these bountiful shores, not all Kaishel and Tapajarids can fly north, as they have found unique adaptations to this context that no known pterosaurs of Earth ever resorted to. Sacrificing their wings. Without lumbering megafauna or shrieking monkeys, the foliage of Kaishel proves to be a bounty for those quiet enough to take advantage. A group of nut-snapping tapajards sacrifice their wings for another thumb, and with powerful zygodactyl grip, they can slowly traverse through the foliage in a way that does not alert the threats below and around them. This strategy proved highly successful, and there are now dozens of these arboreal flightless pterosaurs. Perhaps due to not needing to allocate so much of their brain to flight navigation, these pterosaurs are notoriously intelligent, with the Tlaton describing their creativity and cunning in operating latches, manipulating complex tools, and even in some species like the Juiji, comprehending and communicating using Tlaton sign language. To the Tlaton, these are beings, not beasts, and are regarded and treated as such. Although some in the assembly and great library are skeptical, 
Those who have interacted with them do not take long to come to the same conclusion. The Notsukizu, or crow folk of the Picardian Highlands, were long assumed to be homunculus or demon of some sort. Since the discovery of the Kaishalan flightless tapajards, it is now accepted that these entities are entirely natural. It is now thought likely that they were present in Picardia before it broke off of Kaishal around 40 million years ago. The Picardiant, like the Tlatan, understood that the crow folk to be entirely sophant, even having ancient treaties to leave the highlands under the general purview of the Notsokidu. These treaties have prevented any detailed exploration of the highlands by mainland or assembly naturalists. Picardiant of the lowlands are mistrusting enough of their own interaction with mainlanders, much less permitting outsiders to violate their treaties with the notes of Kidu, but enough interaction has been permitted to have a basic understanding of these beings. They are tool-using omnivores who live in small decentralized groups. Leaders of the group, usually the eldest matron, will often gather with the highland Picardiant to trade and share stories. Like most Tapajards, they are monomorphic, with males and females being indistinguishable. According to Picardian folklore, the Notsokidu and Picardians were once enemies, but united to purge the demons from the forest, only to have the first children arrive and cause further harm. The Crowmen and Picardian again drove their enemies from their land, and ever since, the Picardian are wardens of the lowlands, while the Notsokidu protect the spirits and forests of the highlands. Some think the original demons of these stories are the dreaded Silent Ones of Kaishel, as there were no homunculi in the years before the first children, but others think these could be natural demons, confused timelines, or even pure fabrication. Real or not, the Picardians have a long-standing respect of their treaties with the Crow Folk, who preside over the vast and mysterious Picardian Highlands. Thank you to Gage Weber for sponsoring this episode. It has been a real treat finally getting to focus on these fascinating, important members of Chimere's cast. Cheers to my Patreon patrons for your support. Helping me out even at the lowest tier is instrumental in helping me focus on Chimere as a full-time project. Also, thank you for watching this all the way through. Ad revenue has become an increasingly important source of revenue and support, and watching these videos helps a lot more than you might think, and it means so much to me that you do so. I very much hope you all have enjoyed this trilogy, and I will see you in two weeks for the Wild Dogs of Kaimu. Cheers, folks!